In the previous lecture, we discussed the introduction of mechanical systems and the types of mechanical systems. Now in this presentation, we are going to discuss some more concepts based on translational mechanical systems. So let's get started. From the previous lecture, we know that there are three elements which are present in translational mechanical system. The first one is mass, the second one is spring and the third one is friction. We will now define the force equations in these three elements. So let's consider the first element which is mass. So if we consider a box of mass m resting on a rigid surface and if we apply a force f of t to the right hand side then we know that there will be a displacement x of t to the right hand side. Now from the previous lecture we know that f of t is proportional to a where a is the acceleration caused in this system due to this force f of t and if we remove this proportionality we get f of t equal to m multiplied with a where m is the mass of the system now we know that acceleration is the double derivative of displacement with respect to time so we can write f of t equal to m multiplied with d square x of t over dt squared we have just replaced the acceleration with double derivative of displacement with respect to time. Now, if we apply Laplace transform on both the sides, we will get f of s equal to m multiplied with s squared x of s, where x of s is the Laplace transform of x of t and f of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. And this is the force equation for a mass if we apply a force f of t and it undergoes a displacement x of t. Now moving on to the next element which is the spring. So let us consider a spring which is attached to a fixed support from one side and on the other side we are trying to apply a force in order to elongate the spring to the right hand side. In this case there will be a displacement in spring to the right hand side. Now in this case, we know that the spring will try to regain its original position and for that sake, it will try to apply an opposing force and that force is directly proportional to the displacement of the spring. So we can write f of t is proportional to x of t and if we remove the proportionality, we will get f of t equal to k multiplied with x of t. We have discussed this equation in the previous lecture. Now, if we apply the Laplace transform on both the sides, we will have f of s equal to k multiplied with x of s, where x of s is the Laplace transform of xt and f of s is the Laplace transform of ft. So, this is the force equation in case of a spring when we are trying to apply a force f of t and the displacement is x of t. Now, moving on to the next element, which is the friction. So if we consider a dashboard which is attached to a fixed surface from one side and on the other hand we are applying a force f of t. We know that the damper or a dashboard represents the friction. So if you are trying to apply a force f of t to the right hand side. In that case there will be a displacement x of t to the right hand side. Now we know that the damper or a dashboard represents the friction between two surfaces or a surface and a body. And the friction opposes the relative motion. So if there is a displacement x of t, the force of friction will try to oppose this displacement. And that force will be directly proportional to the velocity of the system. So we can write f of t is proportional to v, where v is the velocity of the system. So we have f of t is proportional to dx over dt, as the velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. Now if we remove this proportionality, we will have f of t equal to b multiplied with dx over dt. And now if we apply the Laplace transform on both the sides, we will have f of s equal to b multiplied with s x of s, where x of s is the Laplace transform of xt and f of s is the Laplace transform of ft. And this is the force equation in case of friction. So in this way, we are now done with the derivation of force equations in case of all the three elements of translational mechanical systems. These are very important equations. We are going to use these equations while dealing with the problems based on translational mechanical systems. We will now discuss some cases in order to analyze the displacement and forces in these three elements in a better manner. So starting from case number one, let us consider a system having mass m which is resting on this fixed support. 
If we apply a force F of T to the right hand side, then this system will roll to the right hand side due to the presence of these two wheels. So we can say that for this system, this fixed support is frictionless. Now we know that if we are applying a force F of T to the right hand side, then there will be a displacement X of T to the right hand side. So we can write the force equation as F of T equal to MA where A is the acceleration caused in this system due to the application of this force F of T. Now if we replace this acceleration with double derivative of X of T, we will have F of T equal to M multiplied with D square X of T over DT squared. And if we apply Laplace transform on both the sides, we will have F of S equal to M multiplied with S squared X of S. This is the same force equation that we have discussed in the previous section. And this is due to the reason that there is only one force acting on this system. Let us now consider one more situation in which we are having a system having mass m1 and one more system having mass m2. Let us consider this as a cart having mass m1 and this is another cart having mass m2. And these two carts are connected with a rigid connection. Now this means that if we apply a force on this cart to the right hand side, then due to the presence of this rigid connection, this cart also will move to the right hand side. Moreover, the carts are moving on wheels, that's why the surface is frictionless. Now, if we apply a force F of T to the right hand side on this cart, then we know that due to the presence of this rigid connection, this cart will also start moving to the right hand side. Due to the presence of rigid connection, force in mass M1 and mass M2 will be the same. And hence the displacement in both the masses will also be the same. So we can say that due to the presence of this rigid connection, these two cards act as a single system having mass M1 plus M2. And hence we can write the equation F of T equal to M1 plus M2 multiplied with A, where A is the acceleration of this complete system. Now we can rewrite this equation as F of T equal to M1 plus M2 multiplied with D square X of T over DT squared. Because we know that acceleration is the double derivative of displacement with respect to time. Now if we apply Laplace transform on both the sides, we will have F of S equal to M1 plus M2 multiplied with S squared X of S. Where X of S is the Laplace transform of XT and f of s is the Laplace transform of ft. m1 plus m2 is a constant and hence it will remain as it is. Now observe this force equation and this force equation. They are the same, right? Yes, in this case, the total mass of the system is m and in this case, the total mass of the system is m1 plus m2. But the rest of the equation is same and this is due to the presence of this rigid connection. Due to this rigid connection, the force in mass m1 and mass m2 is the same. And hence, the displacement in these two masses will be the same. And that's why the force equation is the same. But what will happen if the connection between these two systems is not a rigid connection? Let's try to understand this in our case number 2. In case number 2, let us consider a spring having spring constant k and it is attached to a fixed support from one side and on the other side we are applying a force F of T in order to stretch this spring. In that case we know that this spring will try to regain its original position by applying an opposing force. And that opposing force is directly proportional to the displacement caused in the spring. And hence we can write F of T is proportional to X of T and if we remove this proportionality constant, we will have f of t equal to k multiplied with x of t. Moreover, if we apply Laplace transform on both the sides, we will have f of s equal to k multiplied with x of s. And this is the force equation in case of a spring when it is attached to a fixed support from one side and we are applying a force f of t in order to move the spring to the right hand side. And the displacement caused is x t. We have discussed this force equation in the previous section. Let us now consider a situation in which we are having a system having mass m1 and mass m2 and these two masses are connected by a spring having a spring constant k. And this complete system is resting on a fixed surface. Now, if we apply a force f of t on this mass to the right hand side, then what will be the force on the mass m2? Will it be the same? 
No, in this case, the force on mass M1 and the force on mass M2 will not be the same due to the presence of this spring. So, we can say that the force in mass M1 and mass M2 will not be the same. And this is because the spring will store some potential energy because it is present between these two masses. So, in this case, if the force acting on these two masses is not the same, so the displacement will also not be the same. So, if there is a displacement x1 of t in this mass m1, there will be a displacement x2t in this mass m2. So, what is the net displacement in this spring? Yes, it will be x1t minus x2t. And hence, if this spring tries to regain its original position, the net opposing force acting on the spring will be proportional to x1t minus x2t. So, we can write, F of t, which is the opposing force present in the spring, is proportional to x1t minus x2t, where x1t minus x2t is the net displacement in the spring. Now we can rewrite this equation as F of t spring equal to k multiplied with x1t minus x2t, where k is the spring constant. And now, if we apply Laplace transform on both the sides, we will have f of s spring equal to k multiplied with x1s minus x2s, where x1s is the Laplace transform of x1t, x2s is the Laplace transform of x2t, and fs spring is the Laplace transform of ft spring. Now compare this force equation with this force equation. In this force equation, we can say there was only one displacement which is xt. But in this case, there are two different displacements, x1t and x2t. Now, if we consider the spring of spring constant k, then we can say there is a displacement x1t to the right of this spring and there is a displacement x2t to the left of the spring and hence the net displacement in this spring is x1 minus x2. And that's why the net force acting on this spring will be equal to k multiplied with x1t minus x2t. Now, what we understand from this situation? Yes, if there is a spring attached between two masses, then the displacement in these two masses will be different because the forces acting on these two masses are different. And this is because the spring attached between these two masses will absorb some force in the form of potential energy. I hope you got this. In the previous case, that is in case number 1, there was a rigid connection present between the two carts having masses M1 and M2 and due to the presence of that rigid connection, the forces acting on masses M1 and M2 was the same and that's why there was only one displacement. But in this case, since the spring absorbs some of the force in the form of potential energy, the forces acting on these two masses will be different and hence the displacements will also be different. In this way, we are done with case number 2. We will now move on to case number 3. Moving on to case number 3. In case number 1, we analyze the changes in displacement and force due to the presence of a rigid connection between two masses. In case number 2, we analyze the changes in force and displacements due to the presence of spring between two masses. Now in case number 3, we will analyze the changes in force and displacement due to the presence of friction between two masses. Let us consider a system having mass m which is placed on a fixed surface. Now if we apply a force f of t to the right hand side, then this system will move to the right hand side. Moreover, there will be a friction between this fixed surface and this mass which will oppose the relative motion between this mass and this surface. So, let us use a dashboard in order to represent the friction between this fixed surface and this mass. And let us consider the frictional constant of this damper equal to b. Now, if we apply a force f of t on this system to the right hand side, then due to this, the system will move to the right hand side with a displacement x of t. Now, in this case, the friction between the fixed surface and the system will oppose the change in its relative motion. It will apply an opposing force in order to oppose the change in its relative motion. And that opposing force is proportional to the velocity of the system, we know that. So we can write, the frictional force f of t equal to b multiplied with dx over dt, where b is the frictional constant. And f of t is the opposing frictional force that acts between the surface and the mass 
in order to resist the relative motion between the system and the fixed surface. Now if we apply Laplace transform on this equation, we will have f of s frictional equal to b multiplied with s x of s. And this is the force equation for the frictional force acting between the fixed surface and the system having mass m. If we try to move this system through a displacement x of t by applying a force f of t. Now let us consider a different situation considering friction between two moving surfaces. So we have two systems having mass m2 and mass m1 and the friction between these two systems is represented by a damper having the frictional constant b. Now in this case, if we try to apply a force on this system, the force applying on this system will not be the same and hence the displacements will not be the same. So, if we apply a force f of t in order to move this system to the right hand side, then the displacement on this system will be x1t. And since the force acting on this system will not be the same, hence it will move with a different displacement, let's say x2t. And this is due to the presence of a damper between these two systems. So, we can say that the friction between these two bodies will absorb some force and hence the forces acting on these two systems will not be the same and hence the displacement will also not be the same. Now, if this system having mass m1 is having displacement x1t and this system having mass m2 is having displacement x2t, then what is the net displacement of this damper? Yes, it will be x1t minus x2t. And we know that the opposing frictional force is directly proportional to the velocity of this damper. So we can write the frictional force is equal to b multiplied with dx1t over dt minus dx2t over dt. Where dx1t over dt is the velocity of system having mass m1 and dx2t over dt is the velocity of the system having mass m2. In this case, there was only one displacement and hence there was only one term dxt over dt. But in this situation, we are having two different displacements and hence the net displacement in this damper is x1t minus x2t and hence we are having this term. Now, if we apply Laplace transform on both the sides, we will have fs frictional equal to b multiplied with s x1s minus x2s. The Laplace transform of dx1t over dt will be s x1s and the Laplace transform of dx2t over dt will be s x2s and if we take s as common, we will have s multiplied with x1s minus x2s and this is the force equation if we consider the friction between two moving objects. And now we can say that the friction between two moving points causes a change in displacement from one point to another point. Like in this case, the displacement in M1 is x1t, but due to the presence of friction between these two systems, the displacement in M2 is x2t. I hope you got this. In these three cases, we analyze the changes in displacement and forces due to the presence of rigid connection between two bodies, due to the presence of spring between two bodies, and due to the presence of friction between two bodies. From the next lecture, we will discuss some examples based on modeling of mechanical systems. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.